Hey everybody, my name is Brian and I'm a second year physical medicine and rehabilitation resident at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Today's video on the channel is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to take you guys and show you what a typical day in the life is like for myself as a PGY2 in physical medicine and rehab here at Mayo Clinic. So I have to be in around seven o'clock today. I'm on the brain injury service and I try to set my alarm to wake up around six o'clock or so to give myself enough time to get ready, get some breakfast and head out so that I'm not too rushed for the rest of the day. So I've never been a big time, like big breakfast eater. I like to have something really quick that I can throw together easily and then take with me and eat on the way to the hospital and while I'm working on notes in the morning. So we're gonna make a smoothie this morning and take that with us to work. For anyone that hasn't tried this stuff, it's amazing. I want to give you guys a little peek at what types of things I keep in my bag and what I take with me each day when I go to the hospital. You know, this was something I used a lot during my intern year and everybody's probably familiar with, but it's nice and portable. I like to still keep it around because it's a great reference. My iPad and you know, this is kind of my go-to in terms of keeping notes in the hospital keeping track of research articles, writing things down as I go throughout the day. And then I've also got here a little keyboard that folds out, you know, real nice that I can use to, you know, type on with my iPad as well. Okay, so we're heading out right now, leaving the apartment. Um, I'm gonna get ready to head downtown to the clinic. It's about 6.50 in the morning right now, and typically, you know, we're responsible for carrying our pagers from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. whenever we're on the rehab unit. And so we like to try to get there around seven, but I have a pretty easy morning, not as many patients I need to see. So it gives me a little bit more time uh, to kind of relax, take it easy, not be too stressed in the morning. My wife and I looked at buying a house uh, whenever we came up here, but decided we didn't want to really deal with the stress and the anxiety of trying to care for a house up here, especially in these Minnesota winters. So ended up just getting an apartment pretty close to downtown still and only about a five minute, 10 minute drive to work. to work now. Um, it's about 7.10, kind of ran a little bit behind this morning getting here, but uh, it's okay. I'm on the brain injury service right now in the hospital. So basically that's one of our inpatient months um, where we're actually on the rehab unit taking care of patients with brain injuries, strokes, um, and sometimes some of the general kind of deconditioning patients. So we made it into the hospital up here on the third floor getting ready to head into the rehab unit. Gonna pre-round, start looking into my patients, basically touch base. I was on call this weekend, so it's easy for me to know kind of what went on and what I need to know for my patients for today. I only have two patients to see this morning, so pretty cool. Our service is really light right now. It's only around, I think, like seven or eight patients, so it should be a pretty chill morning. So I just finished up my pre-rounding, um, just saw all of my patients, took about 15, 20 minutes. So now we're gonna head back and work on some notes before it's time for bedside rounds. Monday's a little bit different because typically we have what we refer to as bedside rounds in the morning where we go and we meet with all the therapists, the nurses, the discharge planners and such in the actual patient's room and with their family and take five to 10 minutes and kind of go through what's been going on, medical updates, therapy updates. So for each patient, we do that two times a week, either on Tuesday, Thursday, or Wednesday, Friday. Well, starting then at about nine o'clock is when we're gonna sit down 
and table round about all of our patients with our consultant. And here now getting ready to start off for our team rounds. We have a separate conference room for the brain team and a separate conference room for the spine team. We all meet in here together, go over our patients, pull them up on the computer, and then we'll head to the gym afterwards and see how everybody's doing. Just looking out the current therapy gym. So the building down here on the bottom is the current psychiatric building and then they're basically putting a few floors on top where the new rehab unit is going to be located. This is the occupational therapy gym. Lots of equipment in here for patients who are working on kind of regaining that use and function of their upper extremities, um, whereas specifically PT is more focused on the lower extremities. All right, next I want to show you guys, this is our rehabilitation apartment. And so it's super cool. You know, we think a lot of times about patients getting their function back and, you know, walking better, but we don't think about these different daily activities. And so we have this full functioning apartment in here with like a kitchen that actually works and, you know, like a bed that patients can practice making and then a bathroom as well. And so, you know, it really helps patients get here with the therapists and people will come in here and like make pancakes in the morning or, you know, make macaroni and cheese. So it really gives them some more practice and experience with how to do those types of things they're gonna have to do back at home. Okay, so it's about 11.45, good solid morning, got a lot of studying done, reviewed some anatomy. Gonna head down now and grab some lunch at the cafeteria. Just finished up eating lunch a little while ago and typically on Mondays we have conference within the whole PM and R department that's broadcast out. But today we don't, so a little bit slower over lunch, but we're getting ready now to go do something really cool and exciting the speech therapists on our floor are gonna put on this little session for us in the workroom where we kind of go through what some of the different dysphagia diets are like, and then actually sample and try some of the different foods and like the thickened liquids and stuff that we always are giving to our patients, just to kind of give us a sense of how hard it is to maintain your oral intake and kind of give us a better idea of what our patients are going through. I just a few minutes ago saw someone who, when I was here during my intern year, I actually took care of on a completely different service um, and is now back here doing his outpatient therapy. And so super awesome, like completely different person. Really cool to see how much progress and everything he's made in just the last four or five months. Um, I also the other day saw someone here coming back who I discharged a couple weeks ago. And you know, it's great. Like you establish these relationships with these people, which is one of the really cool parts of pm and &R. And it's really fun to see them come back and you know get to catch up with them a little bit more and see how well they're doing because you know you've taken care of them for sometimes two three four weeks if not more and so you really form this bond with them and it's really cool it's kind of like you know an old friend coming back and you get to hear about how well they're doing and kind of talk to them about what they still might be struggling with and then see how they're progressing in therapy so we just finished up that session with our speech therapist trying some of the different foods and the different thick and liquids and had an absolute blast. Probably one of the most fun, but also educational things I've done this year. You know, the reason we have these different diets is to help prevent patients from aspirating who have had some sort of brain injury or stroke. And oftentimes we just kind of prescribe it and we don't really think about what it's like for the patient to have to be eating this modified diet or be drinking, you know, purely thickened liquids. And so super awesome experience that my senior resident kind of helped arrange where we had all these therapists in here they brought in the different ranges of, you know, like nectar thick, honey thickened, or spoon thickened liquids. And then the cooks actually brought in like full breakfast trays of food that represented a dysphagia one diet, a dysphagia two diet, and then the dysphagia three diet. And some of them weren't so bad, like the dysphagia three, you're almost pretty much close to like a normal diet. So that one wasn't bad, but the dysphagia one, like I have so much new respect for patients who are fighting through that and having to eat those types of foods because it certainly is something that people would typically not enjoy doing and so you know similar we always are encouraging our patients to drink a ton of fluids and we tried thickened water and like you don't really think about what thickened water would be like but then you actually taste it and you're like this is this is pretty awful this is horrible and so it's easy for us to sit in the workroom and talk about oh you know mr so-and-so is not meeting their fluid goal well, that's because so-and-so is trying to drink water and coffee that's like the consistency of pudding. And it was a really cool experience, really helped us understand our patients better. But for right now, it's about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna head back. We've actually got some free time here this afternoon with no admissions coming. 
And so we're gonna go grab one of the old ultrasound machines that's elsewhere in the hospital, sit down with one of my co-residents and do some practice ultrasound scanning of the shoulder, which is the joint that we just finished talking about in our didactic series. So super excited we have that availability here and gonna go head off and do that now. As a quick mention guys, PM&R is a very procedural heavy field. And this is just a chart taken from the ACGME website showing the different types of procedures that were actually done by PM&R residents. And so you can see that we get to do a lot of really cool hands-on stuff. And one of the big components of this involves ultrasound training. And so here at Mayo, we have a very robust musculoskeletal curriculum where we go through each joint at a time and talk about the anatomy, the physical exam, the pathology of that joint, and then actually do hands-on ultrasound training for both diagnostic and then therapeutic purposes. So we're all done for the day, everybody. Just got back to my car. It's about 4.30, 4.45 or so. And I do unfortunately still have to keep my pager on me and turned on until 5 p.m. Here on the rehab unit, it's kind of a 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. where we have to be responsible for our pager and having it on in case something happens. But on days like today where it's a little bit slower, there's not as much going on, we're able to sign out to the night resident around four o'clock or 4.30, and then just head on out after that. Thanks a lot for joining me so far on this part. We're gonna head on home, only live about five, 10 minutes away, so it's a nice quick trip. Let's me get home by about 5 p.m. in days like this, which is awesome. I can get there around the same time my wife is coming home, and then we have the full evening for dinner and a little bit of R&R &R with a little bit of studying mixed in. And so I wanna just end this video by talking about, you know, this is a big part of the reason why I chose to go into pm and &R. And obviously I really love the field in terms of what we're doing and how we're able to help patients. But it's days like this where I look at what time I was actually finished and what time I'm able to, you know, come home from the hospital. And I'm extremely grateful and happy that I have this great work-life balance. I was done at the hospital around 4.30, 4.45, and so if I didn't have other errands to run, I could have been back in my house by five o'clock that same day. So when you're trying to think through different specialties in terms of like work-life balance and really wanting to have that opportunity to do stuff outside of work, really look at PM&R. And you know, I love the stuff we're doing for patients. I love the stuff I'm learning about, but it's really moments like this where I still get to have that stuff outside of work and outside of the hospital that makes me really happy that this is in fact the field that I chose to go into. All right, everybody, so that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along and seeing kind of what a typical day in the life is like here as a pm &R resident at Mayo Clinic. I hope you enjoyed watching. Feel free to subscribe to this blog to see more of these videos in the future if you liked it. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know any comments below about things you want to hear more about in terms of what my day is like on the rehab service. And stay tuned because we've got some really cool things coming up that I have in mind for the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll talk next time. Bye.